Hey guys, how's it going? Here I am with 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13 beavers. A baker's dozen of beaver, if you would. And, uh, by the way, so you know, this video is going to have some graphic content. But if you stick around till the end of the video, you are going to see how I skin a beaver and get it ready to start processing the pelt. Um, yeah, so hang out, uh, subscribe, like, share, and watch till the end because this stuff is awesome. All right, so first things first, I'm going to set this down here. Let's uh, grab a beaver and throw it up here so you can see how I do it. All right. And in the next video, I will show you how to flush them and then stretch them. Gotta love the warm weather, but then again, Warm weather's not much fun when you're trying to record or trying to uh, have your skins not go bad. Let's get into it. As you can see, you always want to have a sharp pocket knife or any kind of knife. I always keep my whetstone right here next to me. Um, it works with either marble mystery oil or um. It's gross as that sounds, but you always want to have sharp knives. You always, when you sharpen your knife, do the same licks on each side. You always want to have a sharp knife and a couple and a stone nearby. Now, if you're ever skinning a beaver and it takes you a long time, like an hour and a half or more, don't worry because they take a while at first. It's just Within the last day and a half, I have ripped through 13 beaver. I always like to do what they call ringing them first. I think that's what they call it. Basically where it is, is you take and you cut all the legs off first. Now these beavers, they were given to me, most of them and the set glands were gone. I have a video that I'm posting that shows how to set for the beaver, which I've posted a few before. And then like I said, I'm gonna show a video on how to uh, do the flushing and then stretching. Now I'm saving the feet, the skulls, the tails, and the hide, and some of the meat to use as bait. Well, actually all of it I'm feeding to the coyotes and all, but I'll be making my own bait. So you cut around that, you grab the foot like this, hand here and quickly, yeah. Till it pops. And then the same with this one. Ugh. And my hands are so sore from going through 13 beaver. But I'll be catching more and I got a friend that's gonna give me even more. So looks like all season long I'll be doing it. And then you want to cut around the tail. You know, I've got the awesome old timer pocket knife. And normally, you always want to wear gloves when doing these. But unfortunately, I went through all the gloves I had, so now I have no more gloves. Let's see if... All right, there we go. I don't know if you guys can see me or not. What I'm doing here is I'm cutting through the tail all around. It's not too important how far up you go or how low you go. I try to keep it as close to the tail as I can so I don't lose much fur. Normally, I would not be wearing clothes like this but yeah check that out and then you want to take go into this part which is right near the tail pop it in and with a lot of animals that you catch you want to take and you want to skin from the tail and peel them out beaver you go right down the middle so that way you can put them on a hoop and kind of stretch them into a circle some people use boards some use hoops uh, I like the hoop, I mean, boards will work too if that's what you like to use or all you have to use, by all means, use it because they'll, they'll do the same thing. The thing is, when you use boards, you want to put the beaver all the way on and then you want to pull it out like a half inch. Where hoops, 
Now the reason for pulling out also is so the air gets between the pelt and the board and you cut a circle in it. But if you just take and stick with a hoop itself, you ain't got to worry about that. Normally I'd be saving all the meat from these beavers, making stew, jerky, uh, steak, all sorts of different things. Burger maybe. But uh, they've been sitting around for a while and I'm not sure exactly where they were caught. So now, I don't have much of a sense of smell, but I can smell that. Now you only want to go up under the skin. You don't want to jam it in and go like Jack the Ripper, you know. That's uh, not good. You'll, well, you can. It's just going to rip the guts. And if it's an animal that you want to eat, well, then it might ruin the meat or give it a bad taste. See, I grew up always with the thought train don't ever kill an animal that you don't plan on eating and if you kill an animal make sure you plan on, or make sure that you are eating it so this kind of goes against my standards a little but then again it was either i take them or they don't get used so what i'll do is i'll be feeding the meat to the coyotes i'll be making some bait see how that goes i want to get into trying that and uh everything else i can save i will I was out here last night, oh, pretty late, underneath the uh, shop light, and I had a radio that I had out here. But then it started to rain. I got four of them done last night. I got a bunch done yesterday and the day before. The reason I knew about these is one of my friends ended up posting a video saying he's just about wrapped up the job he's doing. And I got looking, and it shows a spot, and he shows the beavers he caught inside of some cages that are made by uh, Comstock Cages. Uh, Google it Comstock live cage or Comstock beaver trap. Uh, I know the guy that actually created those traps personally and he's a really great guy. Go out of his way to help you. His family's awesome, you know. Really good guy. But yeah, trapping, you're going to get stuff on you. So wear an apron, get some really good knives. When you need to flush them, get yourself one of the, I think it's Necker, I'm not sure the brand, but it's a double handed flushing knife. That is like very important. Um, you could also take and get some razor blades because there's a lot of people I know, a lot of trappers that when they skin they like to use them. I don't because they're too sharp except in a few areas. Like around the eyes and stuff that helps. But then again, if you slip just once where the eye is, it's easy to take a pelt. It could be worth a lot of money and turn it into maybe nothing. Maybe only a couple bucks. So why would you want to waste your effort? Whether someone gave them to you, whether you found them on a road, whether you want to save it for tax taxidermy, whether you want to catch them yourself, make a couple bucks, you know. Watch some more YouTube videos, some tutorials. Find a trapper, like an old timer especially, because they know what's up. And they're willing. Back in the day, I guess they used to not want to teach you what to do. But now, I mean, there's fewer and fewer trappers and... Trapping is a very controversial subject. So if you tell people you're trapping, beware, you're gonna get a mixed reaction. And I don't knock anyone, the people that like trapping or the people that hate trapping. I don't pick fights with either one of them. But yes, another reason, always wear gloves. Right there, I ended up nicking myself last night and I don't have any more gloves and I poked myself a couple times so I'm gonna have to use some antibacterial soap and hand wash I'm gonna have to put some cream on it band-aids peroxide and I got that big old blister there from a stove and uh, the boy all weekend long is wanting me to pop it but I had all these beaver to do and they're full of bacteria so I'm gonna have to get some attention to my hand as soon as these guys are done this is the last one for now And if you do it right, you're not even going to cut into the guts, which is a really good thing. So all right, I skin to one side here. Pop my knife through where the foothole is. And I wiggle it around. And then you take like that and you pop it through. And then you just skin up to there. With a sharp knife, all you got to do basically is just touch it when you go. And you'll see it start separating from the skin. Nothing special needs to be done around the tail. There's a lot of fat near this tail. I mean, a lot. Grizzle, fat, whatever you want to call it. Then I spin them around. 
Well, sometimes I go like that, and then I ugh, use the weight of the beaver for your advantage. I would love to have had the radio jamming, but I don't want to violate any like copyrights or anything. Had a few videos of fireworks where there's a Leonard Skinner tribute band playing, and they actually took the sound away from my video. Uh, I think that was on TikTok actually. Made it so that I couldn't have any volume to it because it was copyrighted music. I mean, it was totally accidental. It wasn't anything on purpose. But how you guys been? Drop a comment down in this video telling me how you are, how you've been. Oh, how's your family, your work, your life every day? Seen anything cool lately? Done anything exciting? Adventures? All that. Come on, guys. Get a long winter ahead of us. Uh, <laughs> as they said in Game of Thrones, winter's coming, right? And this Indian summer, it's a blessing and a curse, I tell you. Then you got the whole time change. Now, they say normally these beaver pelts, they go for like 10 to 12 a piece. But if you put them up the right way, and especially if you knew how to tan hides, you'd always get more for a tan hide any day. But you gotta make sure you do it right, because a lot of fur companies don't want you to do that. They just want you to skin them out, flush them out, throw them up on a hoop and stretch them the right way. And then they do the rest. But if you were to be able to take and preserve them like that, you could get a lot more money for them. So hey, if you catch a few furs that maybe you messed up on them pretty bad and stab a hole through them, don't call it a loss. You can always sew it up with dental floss, get a couple bucks. But maybe, just maybe, you could take that hide that's got the hole in it and normally wouldn't get you anything if you got a bunch of them and tan it. Practice tanning it. Now I'm out to men, they say brain tanning's the best, which it is. And my stepdad said every animal's got enough uh, brains to tan its own hide. But that can be a stinky, messy thing. Now, I have a bad sense of smell, in fact, almost none, so I can get a skunk without shedding a tear, <laughs> which is why uh, back when I was married, I got banned from doing skunks anywhere as close to the property or even at all, because I couldn't smell, but whew, everyone else could. <laughs> well, it was cool. This is from a little guy, but on a lot of them beavers, you have these things. That's your caster. If you look in there, that color stuff smells like vanilla almost from what I've been told. So beavers, oh, they use that to mark their territory. So you can actually save that. You can sell that too, or you can use it to make your own uh, beaver lure. Which I uh, use a certain amount of the caster gland with a certain amount of Vaseline. And I wouldn't suggest using a household microwave, but they like microwave it to melt it down and do that. But I know my wife would have shot me if I would have took and microwaved stuff like that inside. She really would have been mad if she knew all the stuff I did inside like that. Yeah, I'm going to spin this guy around again. We got the tail like I was saying. See all that grizzle there? Yeah, that's a lot of grizzle. So you just take and go along there. If your knife starts getting dull, run along your stone quick. Uh, I have an old school wet stone, but one of the best stones I've ever used. You can buy them at Walmart, buy them on Amazon. Amazon's the best because they're not very much money. Around 20 bucks or so. It's a four-sided diamond honing stone. It's got really a uh, coarse grit all the way up to fine grit. And you take about 10 minutes on that stone and really work the blade along each side of that block for a lot. Like a whole bunch until you get it sharper and sharper. You'll get that knife so sharp you can shave with. Now, if you know what you're doing in your practice with a wet stone, you can still do the same thing. It, I really want to take and brush my hair back out of my face right now, but I'm not going to do that. Not this time. Did that last night on accident, something flew in my face and it itched and I, out of instinct, reached up to brush it out and I was like, ugh, man. Be careful when you stick your knife through so you don't stab yourself like I've been doing off and on. Today I stab myself, you don't have to, so you don't have to, right? <laughs> I 
All right, this is I think the fastest I've done gone so far. It's only been like 14 minutes. Thank you guys for sticking in and hanging out with me and putting up with my rambling. If you guys ever want to come along with me on an adventure, see how stuff's done or what I do, or the kind of stuff I like to do to have fun, you're more than welcome. I actually encourage it. Every now and then I get uh, subscribers come up and they see me and we talk. That's always fun. Pop that leg through, if I can. Not have to skin a little more. Whew, there we go. Now that both of them are done, like I said, I'll come over to this side again. Right next to the skin, using the beaver's weight. Get yourself a five gallon bucket, because in a minute I'll show you why, because that actually comes in quite handy. Normally I like to have them on a game bro, which is like this thing you see them hang the deer with if you don't know what it is. Uh, basically like a giant heavy duty metal coat hanger with a hook on each side to hook their feet to. That's actually one of the better ways to do it and easy, but this here, when I'm doing it, that I started doing it, it isn't too bad. <laughs> now I always also I know a lot of people that are really good. They've been doing it for years, if not decades, which good, because they know what they're doing. Me, especially when I first start skinning again, I like to leave more fat and meat on the hide than anything, where some people skin right against the hide so that they get almost nothing on it, making flushing easier. Which, yes, that would make flushing easier. But then again, I don't want to risk putting a hole in these hides. All right, now that once you get up to the shoulder area, try to shape, you're gonna get a bunch of meat want to stick to it. And be very careful, because now you're gonna start getting into where the ears are and the eyes. You want it in the nose. You want to do your very best not to damage that. All right, I don't have my bucket out here. Ah, I got a bucket here. All right, this is not my normal bucket. But you want to take this, move it out of the way, just grab right a hold of this guy and put it so that the stomach is in the bucket and like so it's laying down like that. Ugh. Lift it up. I'm going to move the camera quick so you can watch what I'm doing. All right, make sure this can naturally see. All right, good. Now, welcome back, guys. Now you're just taking, you gently touch it, and you let the weight of the fur drag it down. What that does is it pulls the connective tissues and everything, and the weight of it, plus all the extra meat on there is good too, because now it adds more weight to it. So that it kind of pulls as your skin. Coming up on the ears. Right here's the mouth too. Been about 10 years since I skinned a beaver. And yeah, you just take and you grab hold of it and put your fingers up in to kind of feel what you're doing aha here we go perfect there I was worried because it started taking longer than I wanted it to. I got a friend, Jim Comstock. He's an awesome old guy. Um, professional trapper and everything. He said way back there was a time he could do between 8 and 9 beaver in an hour. That is moving. Let's sharpen the stone up again quick. Sharpen the knife up, I mean. 
I like to get a little bit sharp, but not like a razor for this, because I don't want to cut through. Oh yeah. That definitely makes a difference. There's the eye. <laughs> Keep an eye on me, huh? Please give me feedback on this video because I was really worried about making it because I don't want to upset people. But then again, my channel is all about the stuff I do and the way I live. So, I guess if people don't like it online, they don't like it online. Man, I would not want to be in like Colorado or Wyoming doing this. Texas, all them hot states where like the coldest it gets like, I don't know, maybe 60, 50. That would not be fun. You'd have so many flies all over you. And there's the eyes. Try not to make them any bigger than you have to. I mean, if you're first starting out trapping and skinning, you're gonna make mistakes. Especially when it comes to animals like raccoons or fishers and weasels with a tail. A lot of times trying to strip that bone out of the tail is one of the most messed up parts. And bone's done. Don't rush it when you get to the end. Take your time. Nice and slow. Woo. And there we have it. Look at that. <sighs> That's a big beaver, and look. Actually, one of these only had uh, three feet. I slapped that down there, they're not done yet. As I said about the head, just use his mouth like a handle. Go like that, and the reason I say put him so he's facing forward, is so first you can get the back like that good, then switch it up like this. Just cut right there quick on each side. Peel all that meat off. Here's really important. Put your knife down. Grab like this and just voila. And then you throw that up in the bucket. Then you have this. Uh, when making bait, you can chop off these parts here uh, to use as like whole chunk in your cages and all. Or you can throw it all in a bucket, chop it up in chunks, and process it that way. But if you want to look, there we have it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen beaver. Voila. Hey, hope you guys learned something and I'll catch you later. Uh, have a great day and I'm sorry if this video disturbed you, but yeah, always wash your hands, wear gloves, you don't want zoonotic diseases. Beavers, they have fleas or these weird look, little bugs on, which is crazy. Well, they do. Uh, Make sure you don't leave the stuff laying around for kids or animals to get into. Always trap carefully and responsibly and get out there and enjoy yourself. Uh, yeah, thanks for hanging out. Let me know what you guys thought about this video. Like, subscribe, and share. Come on.